So this is our actually our 16th uh, session together, Zoom call together. So thanks everybody for, for being involved in this. We have almost 80 people registered with us right now. Of course, they don't all follow us on these Zoom calls, but um, they, they come and go and uh, they certainly take advantage of the YouTube calls as well. So thanks for participating in this. Um, what we're going to talk about tonight is I'm going to take it off of share screen in just a second and just, just open it up for questions and comments and sharing in general. If you have anything to share at all or you have any questions that you might have come up since last time we talked together or uh, any comments in regard to anything that we've talked about that you'd like to see expanded on, we'll, we'll take an opportunity to do that. Uh, then we're going to switch to uh, talking a little bit about our October uh, virtual show again for the True North Caricature Carvers. And so we'll just touch on the guidelines again, just uh, long enough so that you're able to see them. And if you have any questions or anything that you feel should be changed this time, we'll make those changes. And then we want you to spend a little bit of time talking about the projects that you're working on. And I have a few slides that people have sent me and they can talk about those. Uh, but if you have a project that you have on your lap right now, you just want to put up to, on the camera, uh, we can talk about that. Or even if it's just a project you just have an idea for right now, uh, we, we, can, uh, we can talk a little bit about that. Okay, so if you, you know, we're going to talk about the sharing piece in terms of uh, sharing in general, but in terms of project sharing for the, the, um, the show, we're going to take care of it in this agenda item. And what John and I talked about doing is, if you have a carving that you've already uh, completed and you're, you've sent that photograph to me or you want to show us that tonight, uh, we're not going to have a lot of comments about that, of course, because we're going to be doing that during the judging and the show piece in October. But if we see something that uh, we think that other people should take note of, that's a positive that they, they should also be doing in their carving, we'll raise that up as well. Um, but if you have a project that's a work in progress right now or work in process right now, and, uh, and we can give you a little tip on something that you still have time to work on, uh, we'd like to do that. And hopefully you're open to some constructive thoughts and criticism on that. Uh, then we're going to turn our, our focus on a couple of um, uh, events or activities or shows that have gone on. Uh, Murray's been quite involved with Lang Pioneer Village for a long, long time, and he was there last weekend, and he's got an Ontario Wood Carvers Association event planned this weekend, so we're going to give Murray some time to talk about that. So that's what he was alluding to about his slide deck, and we'll, we'll, we'll hand it over to Murray to take care of that. John Paul also attended a really good carving show in New Brunswick. Uh, this past weekend, I guess. And um, he sent me some photographs. So I have the photographs on this slide deck. So we'll just let John walk through those. There were some interesting things that went on at that show, um, Murray in particular, that me and, and Kevin Reed's on the line here tonight too, that we might want to think about in terms of Ontario Woodcarvers Association, should we ever go with a show again? There, there were some interesting things that, uh, that John raised with me, and, and we'll talk about them in a moment. And um, then John and I both have a couple of things for tips, chips, and tricks, and so we'll, uh, we'll, we'll talk about that. But if you just off the cuff have something that you've been working on that's kind of novel or you've kind of had an aha in terms of a new way of doing something and you want to talk about that, that that's the point in time to talk about it. So, uh, so be prepared for that, okay? So let's go back to this and I'll, I'll take the screen share off and we'll just uh, open it up for questions or comments that you might have. And that should do that. Okay. So let me just be quiet. If anybody has any comments or questions or anything you'd like to share, go right ahead. I'll drink my water. <laughs> Cheers. Thanks. <laughs> Nothing at all? Crickets. Okay. Okay, so let's go back to uh, the virtual show. So again, it is uh, slated for, um, for October, yeah, our, our regular Thursday evening, October 7th. Um, no, no, that's not right, October 20th. And so, um, so that's what we'll shoot for it. And again, we're asking you to uh, submit uh, to us 
uh, by October 7th, uh, any pictures that you have. Um, we're suggesting up to two carvings per person, but will be accepted. And we're, we're gonna continue to have the three classes, the novice class, intermediate and advanced class. And if you recall last time, um, somebody might have said, geez, I want to put my uh, carving in novice. Once John Paul and I looked at it and looked at the other carvings that uh, were submitted, we said, geez, that really person should be at intermediate level based on what we're seeing. So we'll, we'll, we'll maintain that, uh, that right if you want to move things from class to class as, as is appropriate. Uh, I ask you to send us some uh, photos, three photos of each carving, uh, and uh, and make the photos really, really uh, large files. So 500 kilobytes to one megabyte. Send them to me to my address at mark at tributesandwood.com. Uh, try to get a, a dark background or a light background, uh, not a lot of busy background behind it so that we get a real good chance to, uh, to take a look at the carving. Remember that John and I are trying to provide a decent job in this judging uh, through photos. So it's a little bit difficult. So, so make it easy on us by giving us a real blank background that we that really makes your carving stand out for us. Question. Uh, again, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, it's Dan. Um, my question is, I've never entered a, a competition whatsoever. I've been uh, cutting on wood for years, but um, I guess my question is, where do I start to enter something? Yeah, so so normally, uh, if you've never entered a live competition, you'd, you'd enter it at novice level. And then uh, once you win a few ribbons at the novice level, or once you've been in novice some period of time, you might go up into an intermediate and use the same protocol to go to advanced or, or open class, whatever that's called at a show. Um, but having said that, you can enter at any class level that you would like to enter. Um, and so that goes for any show and certainly goes for this show. Um, you might, uh, for this show, Dan, you might just enter yours at novice and let John and I, John Paul and I put it in the right class, depending on what we see in your carving and what we see in the other carvings. Because what we're trying to do is get a decent competition, right? It's more fun if you're competing against like levels of carving. So we, we try to uh, plunk the carvings in novice, intermediate, advanced class in a way that you have a real good competition. Terrific. Thanks so much. No, and one last question. Is there a seniors discount? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, everybody gets it, by the way. <laughs> Money back guarantee. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> so, so all carvings are welcome. So, uh, th there's there's really no boundaries on the carving, other than that it's a caricature. Yeah. So it's a caricature carving in that everything is exaggerated. But if you want to do an animal carving or human carving, a mythical carving, whether it's your design or somebody else's design, whether it came from a rough out, uh, whether you had some help with it, like if you had an instructor guiding you through the steps of making it, that, that, that's all fine. We just want to get everybody participating. Okay, right the whole, the whole, okay. the whole well, idea behind this, dog. just get you to put on mute there again. They're getting dressed, but she's still in her, yes. Yeah, I'll get you to put on mute because we're getting your conversation here. Uh, so, so again, our idea here is to have a very friendly com uh, competition. So uh, as many uh, carvings we can get in, we're, we're happy with that. And we're hoping to advertise this as such and, and get other people joining us as a TNCC member and signing up with us so that they can participate in this. So, so if people are watching this uh, on, Zoom, on uh, YouTube, as an example, and they'd like to participate in this, we think that's wonderful. Just send me an email and I'll get you on a distribution list. Uh, the judging again, John Paul and I, uh, between, between our because I never, never judge between hey, Wayne, Wayne, I'm going to get you go on mute. Okay. So um, John Paul and I are again going to select the first, second, and third in each of uh, novice, intermediate, and open classes, and um, and, uh, and 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 based on that, 
we're going to, uh, well, I guess what I should say is the next line here is we, we hope to have five or more carvings entered per class. And we did pretty well last time. Uh, we, we moved carvings around to John Paul and I so that we get five or more carvings, but that gives us an opportunity then to go ahead and have a first prize, second prize, and third prize. Should we only have three carvings or less in a particular class, there'll only be a first prize. If there's four carvings, there'll be a first and second, and of course, five or more, there'll be first, second, and third, and that's normally what you see at a live show. And then uh, on our October 20th meeting, uh, we'll have a judge's critique, which, which I think is the most fun of all. Uh, you know, John and I, between October 7th, when you've uh, entered your carvings, uh, your photos, and October 20th, we'll do the judging and we make notes of what we, what we see that we want to raise up with everyone. It's a great opportunity for you as an individual carver to get uh, personal feedback that you often don't get at a show unless you go chasing the judge down. Uh, but it also gives us all an opportunity as a group to learn from each, each other's uh, carving as well and seeing the things that could be improved and the things that we should be mimicking because they're judged as a, a real positive aspect of that carving. Uh, we're we're going to continue to go with uh, recognition certificates for first, second, and third, and those will be mailed to your homes. Um, First place winners will again in each class receive a one year membership to the OWCA, the Ontario Woodcarvers Association. If you are already a member of the Ontario Woodcarvers Association, your membership will ex be extended by, by that year. Uh, Murray will be featuring the first, second, and third winners in the OWCA magazine. Now, that was our, our, our thought from last time, but I think you put them all in, didn't you, Murray? Yes, we put everything in. If, if we have them again, and they're good photographs. We'd love to put them in so everybody can see. Great. And we'll do the same thing again on our Ontario Wood Carvers Association website. Everybody's photos will go on that. So again, the milestone dates, we're at October or August 18th right now. At this meeting, we'll take a look at uh, your thoughts or your ideas on, uh, on an entry or any progress you've made on the entry. We'll do the same thing on our September 15th, uh, our next meeting, and just give you a little bit of feedback and advice so that you can come with the best carving to the uh, October 20th meeting. Uh, everyone should again have their carvings entered by October 7th, and that's simply sending me your three photos. And October 20th will be the... Uh, the event that we talk about. Okay, let me just pause there. Are there any questions on anything we talked about in these guidelines or anything that you see that we should add to these guidelines? Uh, You're cutting out, Wayne. I will have to come back to Wayne. I see he might be having some internet problems. Uh, I, I got banished to the basement. Uh, the, we had a couple. I don't think down here in the, in the cobweb and the chips of the dust. All right. Okay. So that's what we're doing now. We, we've got a few um, things that have been entered. Fertis, you sent in um, something that oh, you completed cool. that hopefully you're planning to um, to to enter into the show. Yes, definitely. Um, so this, I, I follow International Association of uh, Woodcarvers, and I watched that YouTube video. So last year. Kevin Applegate had a Zoom meeting in there and uh, he, cover, he carved uh, a hillbilly. So I kind of just followed his instructions and I carved this, uh, this hillbilly and um, just used a magnet so it can be a, a fridge ornament. And uh, yeah, just, just uh, followed the instructions. He used a two by, this is a corner piece I used. Uh, he used a two by two by six inch. I used a little bit longer piece so I can get some more flow in his beard. And I used a six by six by seven and a half inch piece. So it turned out okay. Very nice. Thank you. Any any questions for Fertis? Let me I, ask you. I, let, sorry. 
No, go I, ahead. Agree with, I agree with John. That is a really nice piece. And I've been watching you come up starting from, you know, what you've been doing carving wise. And man, you're taking big steps. Looks really good. Thank you. Thank you, Danny. For sure. Talk a little bit about the, the finish on this, Fertis, because uh, others probably could kind of learn from you. What, uh, what, what was the final finish on this to seal the acrylic? So I used that, um, I forgot the name. Um, that the wax? Finish, yeah, yeah, the, the one that I uh, bought from. Our Howard Feed Max? That's right, that's right. That's what I used. Uh, used uh, acrylic paints like watered down. And uh, just for the beard, I, I kind of mixed uh, uh, gray, white, and just thinned it down. And then at the end, I, I kind of uh, just uh, watered down white paint. I just um, painted on top of the gray and white mix. And yeah. uh, for the skin tone, I just used a regular skin tone acrylic paint that I've uh, bought from Michaels. And, yeah. Really nice. Thank you. And here's the second one you sent in. Yeah, this second one I showed uh, in our last meeting, I showed the head. So then I cut back the head and I carved the, the hat. Uh, for the hat, I used the corner piece. So I have uh, on the band, so I've cut uh, like two by two, like the corner piece from a, a block of wood. And I just used that. This is the second attempt that uh, was successful, the first one kind of got messed up. Uh, so this is just a, just a bus I'm working on. One of the interns who has who works with me at work, he is kind of finishing up. So I said I should carve a bus for him. So so that's just the head with the head. Nice gift. Nice. Yeah, Thank nice gift for sure. Yeah. So this one is a work in process. So would you be interested in a little bit of uh, feedback on it? Yeah, definitely, sure. Couple of things I would do at this point that uh, you, you might consider is you've got a fairly uh, wide brim here, like a pretty thick brim. Mm -hmm. You could probably take that down quite a bit, you know. And and that and what that would do is that it'd make it look like the 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 ball cap really is fitting to his head back in here. Sure. Yeah, I can do that. Just a thought. Um, back in here where the ear is, I don't know whether it's the photo or whether it's actually the case. It looks like the ear is is proud or higher than the sideburn. It is. It is. So you might you might just take your um, you might just have a you might just uh, somebody said Leo, you want to just mute there. <laughs> So um, you, you might just, you know, just take a knife or gouge and you could, you could bring Turn this ear portion below the sideburn, you know? Yeah, yeah, I can do right. that, definitely. Right, right in here, yeah. John, any thought on, on the, this carving? Yeah, I just uh, want to show him like the ear on this guy. Well, hold on, I gotta, I gotta take this off. Hold oh, on. sorry, sorry. No, nope. yeah, go ahead. Yeah, uh, where are we yeah. See the ear is flat, flush against the uh, side of the head. Right. right. Yeah. Yeah. See what I mean? Yeah. I can do that. Your, sure. Yours is a little thick here. I think if you just smooth that, you just look at your own face, right? Your own okay. ear. It's yeah. Smooth yeah. against that. Definitely. Yeah. Very good. Thanks for the That's tip. Good. No okay. problem. Okay. Uh, Mike uh, Southen, you're on the line tonight. Yep. Why don't you talk about this? Well, I, uh, yeah, this is a finished piece, obviously. I, I, my wife wanted a garden gnome, I think, but I got a little carried away. So <laughs> I decided I, <laughs> I started carving additional things and making it into a little, first of all, I just sort of had this gnome idea. And then I uh, thought, well, he's gotta be doing something. And so then I started, uh, we have a lot of nut hatches around here, so they're always at my feeder. So I thought, well, I'll get them uh, feeding the nut hatch with something the nut hatch can't get into. And so uh, fortunately we have uh, an oak tree in our backyard. So I uh, 
picked up a few of those acorns and had that as a model to make the acorns that are in the basket, carved the basket. The most things were in a basket, but the uh, little uh, mushroom that the nuthatch is standing on is actually a, just a, it was a little log of cedar I just had in my wood, wood pile. And then a little hammer and so on to try and tell a little story about what the gnome is doing for the nuthatch. <laughs> so it was fun. Yeah, love the story. Nice little story. Good. Good. I noticed the nuthatch right off the top. We have them all over the place. They'll come and land on your head. They're <laughs> This looks really good. The uh, the finish you use, I know she did a lot of dry brushing in here. And uh, again, something that uh, we've talked about, John certainly talked about it when uh, <coughs> he was giving his uh, painting tutorial and it really made, a, really made a nice effect. Sometimes with that, for example, on the hat, I, I think that's one of the ones, yeah. Um, sometimes I'll take a very fine uh, sandpaper after the initial of after the initial painting of, a, of an element. And, uh, and then just use that to knock the edges off the facets. So it just makes it look more like, okay, there's not a piece of plastic here. Um, this is, you know, a wood carving and, and it sort of speaks to wood carving, I think. So I do that and then finally the final seal, sealing coat would be at the end. Very nice, any questions for Mike? Okay, thanks Mike. Wayne, do you want to talk about uh, your carving here? Yep. <laughs> I'm having a little technical difficulty on this end. So. <laughs> <Okay. laughs> yeah, no, I, uh, I was getting some feedback. So I went to the basement, but I don't have a good uh, connection down there. So uh, I guess you can hear me now. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Well, uh, this is. This is going to be one of my entries. I've had him done for a couple of weeks. I think I showed it the last Zoom meeting we had, but he wasn't painted or he didn't have his trusty dog with him in. But uh, this is <laughs> typical of what I do. And uh, I call them so Shore Rednecks because I live on the so Shore of Nova Scotia and it <laughs> sort of represents some of the, some of the locals here. So uh, yeah. they seem to be pretty well accepted. As you nice probably face. can tell, as you pro probably can tell, I was influenced by Lynn Duggerty and uh, with the heads and, and whatnot. But after a while, you tend to, you know, I guess pick up your own style and, and uh, kind of weed away from, from somebody else. So uh, I've had people tell me that, gee, they all look alike. And I always say, well, they're, it's a big family. So. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, really good. A couple of things I'll point out here, uh, just for people as as they're working on their projects. Like you, I think you did a really good job of using washes here. Like you can see the kind of the modeled camouflage, if you want, on the jacket. Uh, in here, the dogs coloring here as well. You know, you can just you can see through these colors, and that's what. John Paul was talking to us about when uh, he, he was giving us the tutorial on painting those washes allow you to see one color through the other so you don't nothing looks like it was delineated like a like a, a paint by number sort of a painting it's it all blends together so that's something for for people to think about yeah, um, I, that there uh, that style and, and the pattern the dog everything I, I happened on a Tom Wolf yeah book and uh, that's how Tom he, he even gives you the colors or he did I guess Tom's fast now um, gives you the colors and the step by step so yeah it's that's not my creation really it's well, it, my it interpretation is. yeah it looks really good any questions for Wayne okay thanks Wayne I got one other question before, before I go back on you. I, I tried it the other time, but I think we're broken up. In your uh, rules or suggested rules or whatever, you mentioned three pictures. Send in three pictures. Is it permissible to send more than three? I mean, I did. I oh yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Get some better angles and stuff. 
Yeah, we should, we probably should say a minimum of three. The idea is, you know, if, if you can take as many angles of it as, as possible, uh, just give John and I a better chance to do a decent job of judging. Yep. No problem. Good. Thanks, Wayne. Thank you. Hey, hey, Wayne, just uh, one more, uh, one more tip there on yep. the, uh, on the habitat, like the grass, I, I would put some grass there or um, little leaves or whatever, something on the ground just to make it look like he's outside. Yeah, I, I, I have in the past, I like to say I've carved quite a number of this character in different poses and stuff. And I have a devil's own trouble creating something that to my eye looks like uh, grass or moss or whatever. It's about as good as I can come for an outdoor scene, it snows. And, that, and that's pretty easy, eh? everything's just snow white. But yeah, I, I agree with you 100%. I, I gotta have to put some practice into it. Uh, yeah, yeah, just give us give us some thought. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. No, I'm open to I'm open to any kind of suggestion. I didn't get here by myself. Yeah. <laughs> one of the one of the things that you know I might suggest something that I've used and it might help others uh, with this thought as well is sawdust. And so I'll just go over to the back of the table saw and scoop out some sawdust. I'll mix in uh, some watered down white glue, cabinet maker's glue or carpenter's glue. And it, it kind of makes a bit of a, a porridge type of a thing. Um, if your surface of the wood then is a little bit abraded, when you put this stuff down and it's watery enough, it'll, it'll glue itself to that. And so now you have a texture. You can even make a little bit of a hill once in a while if you wanted to with the sawdust, but you have, you have a bit of a texture. And then when you put your uh, acrylic paint over that, you can you, you use the wash method of blotching it on so that it doesn't it doesn't look solid green if you want. You know, you get different tones of greens and browns. If it's in the fall, add some yellows and reds, and it it, it makes a makes a quick um, uh, sort of landscape that looks kind of nice. You know? Yeah, yeah. It's something to to strive for, practice on, and do some yeah. do some experimenting. Yeah. That's right. Now, I don't know if Larry Whitehead is on the line tonight. Larry, are you with us? I guess not. So Larry sent in uh, a number of um, carvings that he has produced uh, fairly recently. I don't know which ones. Larry's he's... in our group there. Larry's here on the call? Yep. I think he's just on mute. Are you on mute, Larry? Can you come off of mute? Might be having some trouble. Okay, so Larry sent these in as carvings that he's done in the recent past. I'm not sure which ones uh, he'll enter in the in the in the event, but you can see he's uh, he's done a really nice job. A number of caricatures and done some animal animal caricatures as well, which are really cute. Um, so again, just to strengthen the idea that the caricatures for our show don't have to be human figures, they can be animal, animal figures or mythical figures, anything that you care to share. So some nice carvings from Larry. Okay, so I'm just going to come back to this view. If anybody has something they're working on that you want to hold up to the camera or just talk about the idea you're working on, uh, now's the time to do it. Ken. Ken's got something there. You're just on mute, I think. Ken. That's, I'm trying to unmute. I need both hands. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know whether the light's good enough or not. <clears throat> this is a caricature of a lumberjack. Yeah. Um, with, well, of course, we call this the Madoc dinner jacket. <laughs> That's how we dress up for dinner here. <laughs> and uh, I haven't finished the base yet. He will be splitting wood in the snow <laughs> eventually. Okay. But we're getting there. That looks good. Looking good. One of the toughest things for me to do is paint eyes. I did that six times before I was satisfied and started to leave it alone. Thank you. <laughs> that looks good, Ken. Yeah, I have one. Can you see that? Yeah. You'll have to keep talking, Roger, so we can see. Yeah. It. Oh, nice. Yeah. 
This is a commission that I was asked to do by an in-law for her neighbor who's a doctor who raises bees. So the criteria was to uh, do a carving with uh, that had a medical and uh, bee thing. This just fell off the base, that's all. So, but I've uh, been trying to get it together. Here's the uh, nurse with the pill <laughs> ready to administer. As you can see, I have a pair of pliers that fell off on the floor somewhere here <laughs> laying on the table with a stinger. Uh, I'm going to have to redo my bees. They don't look like bees. They look, look more like flies. So uh, I, had each, I had a bunch of them she wanted. So I have one with a, a wing being bandaged, another one with a head being bandaged and so forth. And then this is the patient about to get the pill. <laughs> and I've had some problems with them. Mainly, I, I've had a real problem with the, the uh, ties for the gown. And I tried using uh, just lead foil, and it hasn't worked out. So I've got to put some more thought into how I want to make the ties for his gown. Mm -hmm. so. Very nice. That's looking good, Roger. Oh, well, thank you. The face Roger, did you ever think about using a model, like uh, do a tie? <clears throat> and like a, a piece of cloth and tie it up and you'll have yeah, a I've model done, of the carving yeah i've done that it's trying to get it small enough in a piece of wood oh. to carve it that's where i keep mucking up somehow i might right. have to go to a very hard wood to try to and use a micro power chisel or something to right right carve it yeah a little dremel yeah, yeah. That's, that's really good. good that's funny that's fun <laughs> Thank you. Okay, anybody else like to share anything that they've got on the on the board? Okay, well, thanks for that. So keep working away. If you want to send John and I an email at any time on something you're working on, uh, we'd be glad to just sort of one-on-one -on -one give you some uh, thoughts on it if that's helpful. So so take advantage of that as well. Okay, the next thing we're gonna talk about are the shows and uh, Murray's gonna start off and Murray, you were saying you have a, a share screen. So I'll just send it over to you. Okay, this uh, Saturday coming up, to let you know there's an OWCA Invitational Carving Day at Lang Pioneer Village. Uh, the unique part about this village, being uh, connected with them, uh, they're very happy to have us there and to be available anytime the, the guests want to come in to talk and to talk with us about it. We can share what our carving's about uh, online as they post it to their website. They've got some questions about whether our carvers are going to sell anything that day. They'd love to come and buy. So it shows you that there is a, a, an opening for, for you or for anybody to come in this way. And it's from 10 a.m. to 3.30. Now, as I mentioned this, uh, my main purpose in saying that, in telling you about this is that uh, I know that you're not all in this area. If you are in the Peterborough area, which is north uh, east of Toronto, you're more than welcome to come and just to come and fit in for the day, be part of us. And it, it's, it's a great day to fellowship with everybody else too. But what's happening is that our clubs are not getting any bigger. In fact, they're shrinking. And some of the presidents, one I talked to recently said that um, she was inviting people to come to this particular show. And the older fellow said, well, we've been to enough shows already. We're just not interested in coming again. And the attendance at her club is not as good as it was before. COVID did that. And I think aging at the same time COVID was there, it was a problem too. So I just go on to say August 2019 is when this next shots were from. You'll see that guy by the name of Mark Sheridan up at the very top right hand side. He's changed a little bit in these years. And uh, fellows and gals just sit there information out and talk about it to anybody that comes along. 
Now, Mark did share something at that uh, uh, time with us. And he shared the fact that he was talking about character carving. We had a video screen set up. I don't know we're going to have that this time around, but it just shows you the facilities are nice, big, and bright. It's a great big barn, a brand new barn, not something that's used for animals, but it's air conditioned, a big fan, and so it's a great place. And then I'll go to one more, a couple more shots here, people. Oops, I went the wrong way. You can see the Magic and Wood at that stage, we're advertising it and to come to the show of Magic and Wood and Pickering. So lots happened since 2019. And the guests that come to the village are really are very impressed with what they see. And they love talking to the guys. We've got this time around, we're providing um, small uh, pieces of pine. They're about three quarters inch square and six inches long or so for the kids to make uh, wands. And so the wands that will come up uh, out of this, they'll be able to take them home or at least get started to take them home. Now, as I say that and come out of this, uh, stop the share. I want to say something else, uh, things that are happening in our, our community and carving community. Uh, the Black Creek Pioneer Village was a place where our um, OWCA had, used to have a lot of shows there before the uh, Ontario Woodcarver Association moved over to the east side of Toronto. They were at Lang, or at least the Black Creek Pioneer Village many times. But as time went on, we grew in size, and Kevin Reed and I went there in 2019 to set up something for 2020, and COVID came along and put us off. But the fellow that's running this has been after me for, uh, the date is in the 17th of September. It's coming up in the next month. If you're interested in doing that, it's in Toronto. Please get a hold of me personally, and we'll tell you more about that. There's some clearance that we need to do for, Lang for the Black Creek Pioneer Village to be a part of the program there. Mm -hmm. But it, it could be an opportunity for you to begin demonstrating, to show things and you'd let me know. I think the important part of it is for, for us to get out and be a part of the community, show people what we're doing. The fact is that many of our carvers come in when they retire and it isn't too many years after that that some of the things start to happen that require some assistance from doctors and medical, et cetera. So we're not able to go as much out in the community as we used to. So it's important to recruit some people. Now, I should mention just before that show comes up in the September 17th, and September 10th is the show. It's one of our first and big shows that'll happen in Ontario on OWCA show. It's actually the uh, Kawartha area uh, at Bob Cajun, and their show is going to be quite amazing. And this is the first time around that the carvers are not having to set the tables up and prepare everything. But they've entered into an agreement with the curling club who are going to take over and do all of that for them. And the agreement is that once the proceeds, et cetera, come in the door, the curling club will get that. So it's, uh, the guys are excited about that. So I think if you're free, you'd like to come up that day Bob Cajun is not that far away from Toronto, and you might like to be a part of that special day. So that's great. Thank you so much, Mark. Now, Murray, on the uh, the Lang event coming up this weekend, um, if people um, from this call want to attend, and what what do they do? Is it just drive in, drive to the barn, basically? Yes. What you need to do is get a hold of me, and I can send you a map. That's number one. So murray.lincoln at gmail.com will get you, or if you look up our president's uh, email address, you can see that also. We have a map that shows you where. So the barn is actually on the north end of the property. And as you go to that into that driveway, into that uh, parking lot, you can come in and each carver comes in free. And if you have one guest, that guest is also free. If you have more than that come, they would like you to go to the front gate and register there. So uh, that's what, what generally where the area is. The Lang Pioneer Village is just a little bit east of uh, Peterborough uh, off of number seven highway, the highway going up to Ottawa. And so it's only about uh, maybe a half hour out of Peterborough. It's easy to get to a great spot to be. And you have an opportunity to, during the day to walk around and see the village also. 
And I would just suggest too, that you bring your own lunch. We're not gonna be able to provide uh, beverages and that type of thing, bring your lunch, your water, whatever. And uh, there's washrooms right there too, in the same building right close by. So it's a great spot to come. Great. Okay, any questions for Murray? Thanks, Murray. All right. So John, uh, as I mentioned, uh, John went to a New Brunswick carving show and brought back some uh, some great photos. So John, let, let's hand it over to you, and, and I'll just fire through these photos. Uh, they're they're not in any order, so you'll just kind of have to look at the photo and talk about it. Yeah, last weekend I was on a show in uh, St. Andrews, New Brunswick. What a beautiful spot, just right on the ocean. <clears throat> beautiful, beautiful spot. If you ever get a chance, it's St. Andrews. Anyway, this was, uh, that was about, oh, it had to be over three or 400 carvings. Um, different, the caricatures wasn't a main thing, but it was uh, a good, I'd say, a, not a third, but say 10% of the whole, all the carvings. But uh, there are some beautiful work there, that's for sure. And the prizes, and the prizes, the prizes was uh, if you want it for a second or third, it was just a ribbon. But they had these uh, sponsored um, uh, winnings. So if you won, if they had uh, they had a Santa Claus, one category was a Santa Claus. So a sponsored guy, like a store or something, sponsored that winning. It was four hundred dollars, or one was fifteen hundred dollars. So whoever won that, if you put your carving in that uh, sponsored uh, event, you would win the $1,500 or $400. It was $17,000 worth of prizes. Yeah, so that was a lot of good, lot of beautiful carvings for sure, wood burning. That's the overall, I, you, you mentioned it was a gym, uh, Mark. I never even noticed the basket there until you, uh, you, uh, you told me about it. But yeah. I guess it was a gym. Uh, that's the overall picture. I think there was um, like five, four or five tables, like long tables. And it's well attended. Like there was, there was a, a crowd every day, a big, big crowd, and a chainsaw carvers outside. If anybody's mm -hmm. seen that show, uh, a cut above. Um, it's a new chainsaw contest carving show. Well, like one of the guys from that show was was there i think it's on every mon monday night yeah beautiful uh birds majority of the carvings were birds songbirds ducks yeah, more more birds That's pretty amazing. Yeah, beautiful work there, beautiful uh, brushwork. That's a very old chipmunk. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Looking like he's a little worn. <laughs> yeah, a lot of bark carvings. Uh, so yeah, that's basically the more, oh, more a little bit more than that. Is that was the uh, uh, intermediate caricature carvings? Those are really good caricature carvings at an intermediate level. Oh yeah. That was the uh, advance. I see that snowman in the front. That's the one that won uh, the best snowman. And that was, uh, he got $400. Whoever sponsored it gets the carving, but the carver gets $400. If you, this here fellow here? This, this Santa? Yeah, that guy there. Yeah, that won 400 bucks. Is that Bob Bob there Ross. from uh, John Paul? Yeah, that's my Bob Ross there. 
and the Mountie. The Mountie won first, the Rabbit won third, and the Bob Ross won second. That's a funny one there. <laughs> mm -hmm. It's interesting, um, John, I, I noticed this after we chatted last, they don't have open, they call it masters. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, they had a whole table of fish. That painting in the background there, the guy uh, I was talking to the guy or the woman that sort that did that. It was a black cap chickadee, and she did a painting. She attached uh, it was almost like a three D effect on the painting. It was really nice. Yeah, that one in the middle, and the kingfisher was really nice. And you, and they, you could sell carvings there too. If you had a table, if you, anybody brought in the carvings, they could sell them. It's an Arctic loon. Did they have a best to show as well, John? Or yeah, well they had. Uh, well, it was um, everything was sponsored. Like uh, <clears throat> there was a military. Military uh, one, that guy won, it was $1,500. Mm. I think it was a bird. I think it was an owl. But they didn't take, you know, the, the top carvings from each class and, and no. choose the best to show to those. Okay. All right. No. It's all sponsored. Yeah. Then so the prize else. money was really, prize money was, was it uh, like every class? You know, like I got a first for that guy. I didn't get nothing. No money at all. Mm -hmm. Not even my entry fee <laughs> back. But they only had like, I don't know, wasn't very many prizes, but it was a lot of money at each prize. Mm -hmm. That's the one that won. Yep. Uh, this one here. Yeah. Yeah, that's one the four hundred dollar one for the best Santa. I got a kick out of this one because he's got a big bow around his beard and and the name of it is Never Sleep with elves around <laughs> and those are yours there's no wabbit when i broke that basket that he was hanging on his hand i dropped the basket and stepped on it and i had a i had to uh uh cut the 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 rest of the the brim off and just place it in front of him oh, that's good jesus good good show any questions yeah, for john good. Beautiful show. If you ever get a chance, go down there. It's quite the vacation. Uh, so a couple of things. Uh, uh, Murray and Kevin Reed are very involved with the Ontario Woodcarvers Association shows in the past. So, so a couple of things struck me on this one is, first of all, they had it in a gym. So I'm sure that gym cost them nothing. It was nothing. It was nothing. Yeah, but but I'm you know so there was probably no fee. They probably need to get permission from the principal or something or the school board. So in terms of out of pocket yeah. expense, there'd be nothing there at all, which is really nice. The um the other thing, although you know, I'm sure there are people like John that didn't appreciate not getting um you know fifteen or twenty dollars for first place or second place or third place. Man, that's a real good way to save money because. Uh, Oh. You know, we know that in the magic and wood shows that the Ontario Woodcarvers Association have put on, like that, that's very costly to be doling out a first place, second place, third place. For each or, category. Yeah. You know, the and, time. Yeah. And if you're, if you're able to do what they did um, and get people, you know, a dental office or right. somewhere right. else interested in a purchase award, then you're not out of pocket at all. You're just taking money from the purchaser and handing it to the winner. Now, of course, in that case, the winner loses that carving. They sell the carving. But yeah. nonetheless, the, it, it was just a different mindset that I thought, you know, the, the challenges we've had in the past, and I'm sure many of the uh, Ontario shows have today, 
um, you know, breaking even. Uh, th this is a nice way of uh, really not having invested an awful lot in the show, but having a great attendance, you know, people willing to come out because they know those purchase awards are going to be big ticket items should they win. Might be something for us to think about. It was, uh, I, I bet you, no more than 10 prizes. It didn't take long to hand out all the money. Yeah. And they, well, the, the gym had was a, uh, a cafeteria. Like they sold hot dogs and uh, sandwiches. And so I think they made the, the money because there's a, a lineup there, people buying pop and water and hot dogs and stuff. So, you know, they, they made their money. And they had the local high school kids uh, helping out too. So, hmm. any additional okay. thoughts? Okay, thank you, John. You're welcome. All right, so let's uh, let's move on to um, tips and chips and tricks. And John, why don't you start off? And I brought a couple of slides as well. Yeah, this is my uh, sander that I use to um, um, uh, match up the arms uh, on the carving. So what I, I do, I. I, I cut out the body, I carve the body, and on the side, I'll lay it, lay the, the body down and flatten it out really smooth. And then the arm, I'll flatten really smooth on the top, and then I'll put it together and it's dead on. And on the next page, yeah, the next page, it's flawless. I, it's perfect. That's how I match up my arms to my body. And then I put a little dowel in between like in, uh, in on the arm, but uh, only shallow. I only mm -hmm. drill maybe an eighth of an inch into the arm and about, you know, half inch into the body. And, um, and I, I sharpen a little dowel and then I push, I push the arm, I lay it down, I push the arm onto the uh, body and I get, it gives me a point where my, where I got to drill in. So I drill in just a light, a, a short hole, like even an eighth of an inch. And then I, uh, I start carving the, the arm and keep on bringing, putting it on, putting it, putting it back off. And I'll, I'll re until it's, uh, smooth enough or low enough to be like, uh, I don't have a, an arm here, but I don't have a, I don't have a body here that has the arm, but anyway, but I make, I carve the arm to match the body that's how i match up the so there's no uh no cracks or good it's seamless any any questions for john hey mark this is for those i have a question um i see that you have the collar sketched out on that carving any tips on how to carve the collar because i always struggle with that uh yeah, I draw it out. Um, once I put the arms on, I, I just drew that on there, but I, I don't carve that collar until I have the arms on. I have the arms uh, whittled down to where I'm ready to glue them on almost before I, because then I can uh, draw the shoulder or carve the shoulder up to that collar. Like I, I, I bring it into it. So, um, Just takes a little while. You, you, you just practice carving those collars in. That's for sure. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Peggy, Peggy always uh, educates me on collars because she's a great sewer. <laughs> <laughs> so you, you can have a collar that's very flat, and um, and like a female's or wardrobe, a woman's wardrobe, or a girl's wardrobe would would often have a very flat collar like that and uh, i think peggy called it a peter pan collar um a man's collar is more like the one i'm wearing that it's it's peaked and it might even be buttoned down so you can imagine that if john was doing this as a button down or a man's peaked collar this point here is going to be the highest point and this right. point here is going to be the lowest point and so if he was doing that first collar, the woman's collar that's very flat, you'd make a very light uh, 
uh, cut here with your um, stop cut with your knife and then just clear away some of the shoulder. If you were making a man's collar, you'd come in with your knife fairly deeply like this because you have to have that collar peaked, right? And so that's gonna have that kind of an angle all the way down. It's gonna be quite deep. So you're gonna be digging in here you know, I'm going to be saying three sixteenths of an inch. You're digging in depth here and meeting it with a stop cut. And then, as John said, bringing your shoulder down to meet that again. And that's the only way you're going to get that peak. Is that what you're well, thinking? Want to, switch, want to switch the other camera, Mark? Uh, put me on. Oh, yeah. I have an sure. example. I have an example here. Good. Yeah. There, there's uh, the collar there. So once I get that arm put on, then I can bring that arm to that collar. And then I'll make a stop cut there. And bring that uh, even closer to the camera, John. Bring that collar even closer. They are perfect. See, see that one there? But once that, that arm is up here before, until I get that right where I want it, then I'll, I'll, I'll put a stop cut here and I'll bring that up to it. Like shoulders, you know, they're not straight out. Yeah, slight, it's, slight it's, angle. The, it's the corner chip where you see the the collar like uh, in in the in between uh, where you have to remove the chip the corner chip on the two sides. That's oh, where, yeah. yeah, yeah. That's where I kind of like to yeah. give it a nice crisp look over there. That's right. where I, I kind of had hard time doing that, but I guess it's with practice it will come. Yeah, and then I scoop that out, scoop that collar out once that's. I scoop the, the all the way around so it makes it look like it's flat, like it's got some uh, motion to it. Yeah, it looks nice. Yeah. Thank you. Welcome. Any more questions for John on that? Okay, I did something interesting that I thought I'd share with you that's something I haven't done before. Um, so you might recall that I hadn't done a female's head uh, you know, prior to, I think it was last summer I did this. And so what I did was, um, you know, I think I explained to you at that time, I was used to doing a man's face and a female's face was a bit of a challenge for me. And so what I did was I, I created uh, a face that had the eye socket a little deeper than I normally have the eye sockets, where this lid was less, uh, the upper lid was less of a ledge and more of a nice pleasant slope as you'd imagine a woman's uh, eyelid would be where she would put uh, eye makeup and that type of thing. Uh, the cheeks are much higher and, uh, and slighter. They're not chubby in any way. They're very angular almost. The smile is much broader as I thought of the character of a woman. Um, and of course the nose isn't a big bulbous nose that I would normally carve for a caricature man. It was, it was fairly slight and it was pointed. And so what I wanted to do for my latest carving that I'm doing with the little uh, mechanical uh, uh, nickel operated horse, um, I wanted to put a child on that. I decided to put a, a female child, a little girl on that. And so I thought, how am I going to, how am I going to carve a little girl's face? And so I started with this. I had no more use for this female head. So I thought, well, I'll start with this and I'll modify it. And I kind of had fun with it. And so here's how we, I started off and here's the female little girl. And so what I first decided to do was give her pigtails and the pigtails, of course, because they are going to come out, they have to be added separately for strength because I wanted the pigtail to have the green of the wood following the length of the pigtail. So I carved her hat, her uh, hair off and I showed all of the, uh, with a little V tool, I showed all of the hair coming back towards the pig pit, to where the pigtail would be. Um, in terms of turning her into a childlike face, I really rounded off her whole forehead so it was less angular and straight. So she has a very rounded forehead now. I uh, kept her eyes pretty much the same, nice and deep. I removed some of the upper eyelid to make it look like she just had really wide open, happy little girl's eyes. Kept the nose pretty much the same. Um, changed the mouth so gave her you know some teeth growing in at the front here gave her a much rounder chin and a little bit of a double chin so I I took the angular aspects out of a, a grown woman's 
facial features and rounded them all out to give her a rounder chin and, and a little bit of a double chin here. And you can see that I took out the, the very angular cheekbone here and made it very round again, just by carving that out. Made the, made the, uh, the um, smile a little broader. And of course, because I took the, ear, the hair off, I had to give her some, a couple of small ears. So you see the same thing here. Um, so you can just see a, just a general roundness to the face for a child based on the females, uh, the, the woman's uh, caricature face here. And then I made some pigtails. And so uh, the pigtails, what I did was I wanted them sticking out of her head that she's on this little uh, pay riding horse. And so they're going to be bouncing up and down. So I have them sticking out the side of her head. The, I started with just a cylindrical sort of a worm-like thing. I wanted them waving a little bit in the air. And then I just took a herringbone, uh, a herringbone uh, pattern, if you want, and just penciled that in made some valley cuts here, stop cuts back and forth, back and forth, rounded each one of those stop cuts out to make it look like the hair had been braided and then turned it around and matched those lines up with what a herringbone would look on the other side. And this is what it came out as. Oh, I added a little, I carved into the face and added a little Band-Aid there. And then just with a pencil, I, I added in uh, this, the eyebrows, just give me the sense of uh, what she was going to look like. And then finally I painted it. And so with the paint, what I did was I, uh, I gave her sort of reddish hair and uh, gave her a little bit of a, an orangey complexion. So I used flesh colors on her, uh, on her face with a little bit of brown, a little bit of red, but then I picked up some, some orangish sort of freckles here. And then I took a very light wash of orange and I did her whole face that way, just to give her that sort of uh, uh, complexion of a little girl. And then I took, uh, I took a, a second string of a guitar, a B string on a guitar that I had broken that string some time ago and kept it. And I made her a set of braces. So just poked a couple of holes in each side of her uh, cheeks here in, inside of her mouth and then drove that in and uh, glued it in place. And uh, she's got a set of braces. Okay, any questions on any of that? Uh, yeah, I do have a question. Yeah, <laughs> you said that that the um, you were making the the pigtails move. Yeah, could you just go over that a little bit? How you did or what you did? Yeah, well, I was thinking, you know, what what she's going to be doing is she's going to be riding one of these uh, nickel operated uh, uh, toy riding horses we used to see in front of shopping malls and that type of thing. Right. And so I wanted to make it look like there was some motion in that rocking. The, the horse is actually going to have its nose down, so that'll look like there's motion. But I wanted to make it look like she was getting jostled around a little bit on that ride. And I first thought, well, I'll put the pigtail straight back. But then I thought, no, that horse isn't going anywhere. The wind isn't blowing the hair back. It's just blowing it. It's just jostling her around. So one pigtail, you can see, is a little bit higher than the other pigtail. Um, on each one of them, they're not straight out. This one has a curve to it in this direction. This one has a double curve. It goes up and then it comes back down again. And then I just drilled into the side of her heads where I, her head where I had uh, you know done this work here. You can see here there's a little flat spot. That's where I would have drilled in. And then I glued those pigtails on the angle that I wanted to see them. So I just glued the end of that pigtail, probably, I don't know, maybe an eighth of an inch or so is glued into her head. Um, and that gave me now a sense that, you know, the, the pigtails aren't uniform. One's kind of coming down, the other one's kind of going up. This one's curling forward a bit, this is curling back a bit. And it just gives you a sense that the, the hair is getting jostled around a bit. Very Did nice, thank you. Okay, good. It looks amazing, Mark. Good, thanks. Well, give that a try. Like, um, you know, I had a lot of fun uh, having done a lot of men's faces in caricature. I had a lot of fun trying a female's face. I did a couple of those and I, I really enjoyed that, something different. And this child's face was a challenge again. You know, um, you, you really have to, you have to think what does a child look like? I, I looked at pictures of children, uh, little girls, and I, you know, tried to get a sense of what I wanted. I had the female's face to start with, so I cheated a little bit. But it, it, it's just another challenge, right? A fun thing to try. 
Okay, does anybody else have anything else to add before we sign off tonight? Okay, so we're signing off about 20 minutes early. That gives everybody 20 minutes to carve before you go to bed. <laughs> yeah, uh, get carving, get uh, yeah. <clears throat> get those projects going. We'll uh, next month we'll have more questions. Hey, this may be of interest to somebody, but there's supposed to be a very good display of northern lights in this area for the next couple of days. Really nice, nice. I'm not going to bed now. I'm going to watch the Blue Jays. They're leading one to nothing. And that's about as miracle as you're going to see. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thanks for joining us, everyone. And, uh, and uh, hope to hear from you. Send us an email if we can help you in any way. And uh, we'll see you.